Good morning. I'm Patrick McDermott, Dean's friend from St. Petersburg in Tampa, Florida. Um, Linda, thank you very much for allowing me an opportunity to say a few words about the kind of man your husband Dean was throughout his life. I first met Dean in 1965. I had just graduated from high school and I really wasn't sure what I would do going forward. Um, I was just a so-so student. My, um, no one in my family had ever gone to college before, and I was pretty sure I would not be the first to go to college. But I knew that I liked music in school. I had played in the um, junior high school band and in the high school band. I was always very fortunate and lucky enough to be um, selected as the first chair trumpet player, sometimes second, but most of the times first chair. And I liked my band directors a great deal, so I thought perhaps I could be a, a band director. So I asked my high school band director, how do you become a band director? He kind of smiled and kind of chuckled and he said, well, don't. And then he smiled again and he said, well, if you really want to try this, you should um, enroll at St. Petersburg Junior College. They have an excellent music school there that kind of mirrors the school of music at Florida State University. And you can get an idea whether you would be successful as a music student. So that's what I did. I signed up at the junior college and I met Dean Page, Eddie Schmidek, um, Andy Mogileski, and Joe Stowski, all music students. We became very, very good friends. Um, kind of like the, the Rat Pack with one extra rat. Um, after the first few days of class, it became really apparent to me that I was probably the least well-prepared kid at the school to be a music major. I had never taken private lessons, never studied theory, and never had really any background or formal background and training of any consequence at all. So the first day, and I wasn't feeling too good about myself either, about my background, okay? So the first day of class, we went to the symphonic band rehearsal. Dr. Reed, the conductor, ran us through, through a few couple tunes. And then he said, now we're going to break up in the sections, and we're going to audition you each for your section and set your chairs. Um, the private um, applied music professors will take each section out and do their section, and I will do the trumpet. So trumpets, please follow me out. So Dr. Reed, we followed Dr. Reed out to another room, and he lined everybody up outside the room, this door. There was probably um, maybe 12 trumpets and each person each student went in to play the audition piece it was a reading audition piece and I'm standing out there and I'm pretty pretty nervous and I'm listening to each person play their piece and I'm looking at the guy in front of me it's a guy about six foot seven with a beard looks like he's 40 years old and as I look him out a little closer I see my gosh this guy looks just like Al Hurt and I go oh my lord I've got to play after Al Hurt plays so the next day Dr. Reed posts the results for the audition. Dean got first chair. I got second. I was good with it. Al Hurt first, me second chair. Um, Dean later on that day came up to me, introduced himself to me and said, um, hi, I'm Dean Page. Um, and I introduced myself to him. He said, um, would you like to join the School of Music's um, Brass Quintet? I said, yeah, that'd be pretty nice. He said, well, we're going to rehearse tomorrow at 3 o'clock at this room and be there at 3. So I went to the rehearsal. The rehearsal lasted about, about an hour. And after the rehearsal, Dean pulled me aside by myself and he said, um, he got this little funny look on his face where he tilted his head and got a smile on his face, which kind of became one of his um, signature attributes going forth, forth in life. And he said, he said, hey, man, um, you can't read where the hoot. He, he used the more colorful euphemism for hoot, but, but I got the idea. And he said, how in the world did you get second chair in the symphonic band? And I said, well, Dean, um, you were the guy that went in front of me. I listened to what you played. I memorized what you played. And I went and I played the exact same thing you did. You got first chair. I got second chair. And he said, you got a few minutes? I said, yeah, I guess so. He says, come, come with me. Meet me at the practice room number nine. He said, bring your horn and bring your Arbin's book. I looked at him. I said, I really didn't know what an Arbin's book was. I said, Dean, I don't have an Arbin's book. It turns out the Arbin's book is the Bible of trial players method books. So I go to the room with him and he sits down with me. For the next two hours, he writes out the counting on about 50 different exercises in the Arbin book, which is a book about the size of a, a, a phone book. And he writes all the canon and he practices me how to count one and two and three and a four and one, two and three and a four and a. So for the next two hours, we play the exercises, I count them, and we get done. He says, now come back next week to the next ensemble rehearsal and we'll see how you do. So I went home and I practiced really hard on these exercises because I thought this guy really knew what he was doing. So I come back to the rehearsal the following week and guess what? I'm a reader based on Dean Page. During my time at CP College, Dean was very kind and very supportive of me. And he solicited the um, theory teacher, Dr. Carroll, to hire me for the school's um, pit orchestra that um, 
played at the um, schools of musical comedies and theater comedies, um, operettas and operas. Um, he also got me hired at the St. Petersburg Little Theater's um, orchestra that did these professional equity shows. Um, over the next five to six years, Dean and I would come back and play mini shows at the junior college, St. Pete College, um, local dinner theaters, um, mini church gigs, um, professional road shows would come in. We played at the Barnum Bailey Circus down in Sarasota, and we subbed many times for the Florida Orchestra. Dean was um, very important in encouraging me to attend um, and study music and composition at the School of Music at Florida State University and the School of Music in University of South Florida. I went on to earn master's degrees at both schools um, in composition. I um, really feel really grateful to Dean for his efforts. Dean was a man that was truly a man who gave more than he expected in return. Um, about a week ago, I um, was speaking to Linda to let her know that Karen and I, my wife, are going to come and attend the, um, the, the service the, the um, celebration service, and she asked if I would consider playing a song at the graveside service with his, the band Dean worked with up there, and I said it would be an honor for me to do that. She also asked if I would play a, 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 say a few words at the morning service, the celebration of life service, and um, perhaps play a song for there. I told Linda, Linda, I really haven't played in about 20 years, but I would consider doing that. Um, and she said, well, what song would you like to play, Patrick? And I said, well, I really don't know, but I'll kind of feel the vibe of the service, then I'll pick a tune. So folks, that's my Dean's story, um, and based on the vibe of, the, of this church today, I really do feel that everyone here at some point in their life has had a special closeness to Dean. Um, and I can feel today Dean's um, closeness and his, his energy here with us today and his nearness. Wow, I just got this little ping in my head where, where I know what song I'm going to play now, and it's totally different than the song when I was sitting in the congregation. So for, 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 I play this tune for Dean, for his wonderful wife, Linda, his children, his family, and his past students. Dean, please forgive me for any clams. I didn't get a chance to hear, hear you play this first. This is the nearness of you.